Hey everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, wishing you a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. I hope you're well and I hope you are safe too. Thank you for joining me in the kitchen studio. We are going to be cooking today a fabulous fish curry and coconut gravy. I know it sounds good, it tastes even better than what it sounds. You've got to trust me on this one. I love making curries from scratch because you know you get or we get to control the amount of spice that we put in it, the amount of heat that we put in it as well. And especially with this type of curry, it is a very mild curry. or two or even a beef or a lamb one it's really good and mild and pretty easy to make so um don't be put off by the amount of stuff that you see here on my bench it's actually really really easy to make and chances are a lot of the food the spices and stuff that I have here if you cook a lot of my recipes you've probably already got everything in the cupboard so let's get going we are going to start um, by making a bit of a paste so it's a bit of an onion paste that we're making um, today and in order to start doing that, what I would like to do, just taking up some, some cumin seeds here, and what I'm going to be doing with a teaspoon of cumin seeds, I'm just popping them into my, my frying pan here, and I'm going to be dry frying them. So I'm not putting in any oil. So a teaspoon of cumin seeds, it's our first step. No oil in there whatsoever. And this is called dry toasting or dry frying. And what is happening when we're doing this is we're al allowing the natural volatile oils that are locked inside those wonderful cumin seeds, we're allowing them to express themselves. This is known as blooming the spices. And this will give those little seeds 10 times the flavor if we were just to add them without doing this blooming process first. So it is easier, so it's just literally dry frying. Take about a minute and doing it all on sort of medium to high heat. It'll take about a minute to dry fry them, and you know that they're dry fried because what's going to happen is you're going to get a lovely fragrance coming from this this uh, from your frying pan or your wok. Lovely, lovely fragrance as these spices begin to bloom. And the other thing that's really easy to tell if spices are ready is that they'll just begin to pop. So you'll start to hear them pop, but you know, keep an eye on them. You don't want to burn them, obviously. I'm beginning to get that fragrance now. So it's been about sort of 40 seconds, and I'm beginning to get that wonderful aroma waft up these cumin seeds. And they're just so completely different when you do this step. So don't, don't um, miss the step out, because it really will enhance the flavor of this curry. So I'm getting a few pops now, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to pop them straight into my little food processor here. Because um, in order to make the paste, we are going to be using our food processor. If you don't have a food processor, you could um, use a mortar and pestle, which is the old-fashioned, uh, you know, grinding on stone, which is how, you know, curries were traditionally made. But obviously nowadays we have all these wonderful uh, appliances that make our life so much easier. So... Feel free to use the appliance. Okay, cumin seeds go in there. I'm then going to take two sort of small to medium sized onions. You can use white onions as your normal ones. You could use red onions. These are actually a cross. They're kind of rose onions. They're really gorgeous. And you just want to peel them, obviously, and then cut them into chunks. Just make it easier for the food processor to get through the onions when it starts to blend. So two of those are going to go in there. And this is the onion paste. So there isn't a lot of ingredients that go into this. This is just a base. Um, we're going to start adding spices in a second as you will see. So our onions go in and then just to give it more um, aromatics, more flavour, I'm going to turn to my favourite jars of onion, uh, sorry, of garlic, finely chopped garlic. And I'm actually doing a decent pinch tablespoon of our garlic is going in there and I'm going to do exactly the same for the ginger as well because yum so don't be shy heap tablespoon of ginger goes in there oh by the way I forgot to tell you how much this makes 
this uh, recipe will will feed between five to seven people. So it's a really um, it's a really decent recipe. It's really nice. So the lid goes on once we've got that all in there, and then we're going to give it a blend until it's nice and smooth. Get rid of a bit of it. You really want to get quite smooth with this one. Um, reason being is when we fry it and make the curry sauce, you don't really want to have big chunks of onion in there. So it's a nice idea, sort of halfway through, to go along with your spatula and you know, sort of push all the ingredients down. It's going to help to give you a lovely smooth finish. So don't, you know, this this process here might take about a minute. liquefying the onion. Not quite, not quite. It's like onion soup. <laughs> so you kind of want it, yeah, you want it nice and smooth because it's really going to help to give you a really silky finish to your coconut gravy and you know, this curry that we're making. So I'm just going to give it one last little whiz. That's the sort of texture that we're after. If you can see that, that's what we're looking at. So it does look almost like an onion dip. That's the kind of that's the kind of uh, finished product we are after. So once you've done that, you can literally just set it off to the side. We will come back to that in a second. Now what we what we're going to be doing is we're going to be frying off a few bits and pieces here in our wok. And one of the things that we're going to be frying. I'll just bring it closer so you guys can see what's going on in my, in my frying pan. There we go. Well, that's better, isn't it? What we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting in a few different liquids to give us a bit of a frying action. And we're doing this all once again. Don't bother cleaning the pan once you've had the common seeds in. Just, keep, just go for it. And I'm going to be doing this on medium heat again. So into my frying pan, large frying pan, or a wok, you can cook the entire curry. Two tablespoons of Bridget's sticky sauce. As well as that, we're going to be adding in one tablespoon of coconut oil. So you could use coconut oil or you could use um, olive oil if you really want to, but obviously coconut kind of feels a little bit more authentic when we're making, making a coconut gravy. So a bit of coconut oil, medium temperature. You don't want to get this too hot. You're going to bring it to the bubble, bring it to the boil. And once it's sort of bubbling away then, we're going to be adding in teaspoon of mustard seeds and the reason we don't want it to be too hot is why we're doing it sort of on a medium temperature is we don't want to burn our mustard seeds because they can go a little bit bitter. Now the next thing I'll be putting in here, you may not have seen these before if you don't make a lot of curries. curry leaves and as well as that while that's sort of cooking away and I'm, I'm keeping a, a watchful eye on it so I don't want to burn those mustard seeds and those curry leaves are beginning to release the flavor which is wonderful I've got a couple of green chilies here that I'm just gonna finely chop down and they're gonna be added in it as well and when it comes to the chili or the spice level now this is where you get to have complete control you know, if you're not a fan, or if you're not sure how much chili to add, it's always a good idea to err on the side of caution, because you can always add more later. But once you've added it all, it's really hard to take it out. So, you know, if you're wondering whether this is going to be too spicy for you or the family, maybe just start with half a chili. You can always add some more. So, two chilies. I think in the recipe, I've got so two to four, but oh, like I said, I'll leave that up to you guys. Give it a little bit of a stir. Flavors are just amazing, even now. <laughs> it's so wonderful. 
It really, really is. And you feel like it's such a rewarding thing to do, you know, make a curry from scratch. It's so rewarding. And I'm feeling extremely rewarded just by the smells that are now making their way through my kitchen studio. All right, so about a minute, minute and a half of frying. The next thing that we're going to be adding into here is that wonderful paste. We want to put that wonderful paste into here now. So, paste in there. And we want to cook this off. And also, while we're cooking it off, we're going to be giving it a little bit of colour too. So it could take, once again, sort of four to five minutes. You know, give it a good stir. You can stirring all those flavours from the sticky sauce, the curry leaves. And those curry leaves do not come out, by the way. They will stay in here the whole time that this curry is cooking. And you can even eat them. So you don't have to worry that, you know, you're going to have... You can't even tell that it's a curry leaf. It'll break down and be really, really soft and gorgeous. So you want to have your onions in here, run about medium temperature. You should hear a sizzle. I'm just going to turn up my heat just a little bit. And what's now happening, apart from the fact that my eyes are beginning to water <laughs> from the onions, yay, what's beginning to happen is that onion, onion's got a lot of water content in it. Like it's really, really um, high in water. And it's part of the reason why when we cut a fresh onion and we start crying, because literally there's so many juices in there come splattering around and go up our nose and cause our eyes to water. So the process that you're doing now, which is once again a really important step, is you're beginning to evaporate the water from the onions. If we were just to continue now to make our curry, our curry wouldn't have as much flavour. So this process here, of frying the onions, the steam that you see coming off my pan is the water evaporation. And as the water evaporates from the onions, the flavor concentrates. So really important step for us to adhere to. You know, and don't rush this step either because you want to evaporate the water. You want the onions to start to color, which is almost like a form of caramelization. And you know, I just say the word caramelization and you instantly go flavor, right? Caramelization on anything equals massive flavor. So give this step, you know, four to five minutes. Uh, stay on it because you want to make sure that it's not catching and burning. And as I was saying, we can do this entire curry into this one pot. So it's really good for cleaning up too. Because what that means is that we've got one pot to clean, so it's, pre it's pretty clever. And you know, at this point in time, like you could literally make this, this, this step here and then keep, you know, cool it down and keep it in the fridge. So when you are uh, ready to make dinner, you know, you've already got, which is probably the longest part of this curry, is this stage here. Once this is done, it's, everything's pretty quick after that. So I'm, I'm happy you can kind of see the colors change from that, that light white to a bit more of a brown tinge in there, which is fabulous. And once you see that color change happen, that's when you know that it's really starting to come along flavor-wise. You know, you're intensifying. And now I'm not getting so much of a steaming action on in the pan, I'm getting more of a frying sensation because I know that that water now has really started to evaporate. So once you're at this point here and you've got some lovely color, you can hear it sizzling, we're gonna move on to the next step. And the next step is, I'm gonna be adding in some tomato sauce. Now you could use my roasted tomato sauce, which would give amazing flavor. If you do happen to be one of those individual, individuals that always has my tomato roasted tomato sauce in the fridge, this is such a nice way to use it up. You don't need much either, but if you don't have my roasted tomato sauce, you could, um, you could get from the supermarket a either just a tomato paste that has no sugar, just make sure it's got no sugar, or a tomato puree, once again, no sugar whatsoever. And we're gonna be adding in three heat tablespoons. I'm gonna add it all. I don't wanna waste it. Let's go for three to four tablespoons of that tomato sauce is gonna go in there. 
together a bit of a stir. You will obviously notice the colour change again, which is just fine. This is what we're after. And then after we've added that tomato paste and have given it a little bit of a stir, we're going to start to add in some of the spices. So the spices are, um, where is my teaspoon? The spices are pretty um, common ones. We're going to be adding some turmeric. You don't need much turmeric. You just need about half a teaspoon of turmeric is going to go in there. As well as the turmeric. And we're going to be adding a bit more chili. And once again, I will leave it up to you how much chili you're going to be adding at this point in time. Because, of course, it's all dependent on how much chili you actually like. <laughs> so um, in the recipe, I've got one to four teaspoons of chili powder. But I will leave that up to you. This is quite a So don't be too afraid of it, because you can always add more later on. I'll show you at which point you can add it later on. So give it a bit of a stir, starting to smell fantastic. We are going to balance out those flavours, which is what we like to do. And by way of balancing out the flavours, and also adding in some fibre, some dietary fibre, I'm going to be adding in some uh, inulin powder. And for this, I'm going to be adding in two tablespoons of inulin powder is going to go on there. Get a bit of stir through. The inulin is obviously going to help to create, you know, just that little bit of extra goodness in there with the dietary fibre. But also, as you guys know, inulin is um, a little bit sweet. So we're going to be adding a balance of sweetness to this as well, which is really, really important to make sure we get a good, good balance. All right, a little bit of kombu now, so it's our kombu water. About 60 ml, which is about two ounces. We're just breaking up the tomato, making it a little bit more fluid, a little bit more easy to work with, so to speak. Adding a little bit more. Inside. Or three ounces of kombu, just to break it up. And now what you want to do is just turn the temperature down a little bit. And we're just going to allow this to sit on this pan, in this pan, and just to sort of start to break down a little bit. This is just going to help the tomato to cook through, which is really important, especially if you, you're using a tomato puree or a tomato paste. We want to cook that tomato out just a little bit, so just a couple of minutes on there. Because if we don't, we're going to have quite an acidic uh, curry, which is we want more of a creamy sort of style curry. So just on a low temperature, just for a minute or two, allow that tomato to start to cook out and to become nice and sweet as well. And then once we've done that, after a couple of minutes, we're going to add our liquid in and pretty much finish off this gravy. So I've got my coconut milk here. I'm going to be adding in more kombu. So in total, you want to put in around about 260 mils of kombu. So over just over one cup. 260 mils is about eight and a half ounces of kombu. And with the coconut milk, we're going to be adding 240 mils, which is eight ounces of our coconut milk is going to go in there as well. You know, I use coconut milk. I find that, you know, if you've got a really good quality coconut milk, it's rich and creamy enough. Um, if you think that your coconut milk's a little bit light, you could use coconut cream. But in in general, I find that just a really good quality coconut milk, I use the Cara brand. It is such a wonderful, creamy coconut milk. It actually, I don't feel the need to use coconut cream here. So good coconut milk. Look at that color. It's starting to come along really nicely. I'm going to turn this up and bring this now to the boil. So this is pretty much our curry done. Our, our, our gravy, our wonderful gravy is done. Now when it comes to the type of protein that you put into this, as I was saying before, there's nothing stopping you from using chicken. There's nothing stopping you from using turkey or lamb or beef or tofu it really is up to you you could make a vegan or a vegetarian version by adding 
just vegetables in here. You've got broccoli and cauliflower and all sorts of wonderful zucchini and, you know, and things like that to make a beautiful vegetarian version. Um, you could up the protein content by putting some tofu in there as well, chunks of tofu. So it's really versatile. This particular paste, once it's at this point, it, again, there's nothing stopping you from, um, you know, popping this when it's once it's cooled out into the fridge, and then when you're ready to have dinner, all you do is add the heat it up and add protein because it's really, really versatile. So we're going to leave that bubbling, just bubbling away there nicely, and let's have a little bit of a discussion about the type of protein that I've chosen today. So you're going to need about a kilo of whatever it is that you have cho chosen to put into your coconut gravy. About a kilo, which is about 2.2 pounds. So I am using white, a very firm white fish fillet. Um, this is barramundi, which is a, um, a fish commonly found in Australian waters, and it is a lovely firm fish. And you want to cut your fillets, of course, no bones, no bones. You want to cut your fillets into sort of, you know, just over bite-sized chunks. And you want about a kilo, and other white fish that you can use if you're um, if you can't get hold of barramundi, but another white fish that's very popular uh, is snapper, is a really good one. You could also use cod, you could use bass, you could use perch. Um, if you want a really, like, probably the best fish uh, in terms of, there's a couple that are really, really good in a curry because they don't break up, they hold their shape really well, and that is monkfish or lingfish. If you can get hold of those, those are really, really good to go inside a curry as well. So you're just placing these chunks of your chosen protein into the coconut curry. And make sure they're submerged in there. If it feels a little bit thick for you, it should be pretty thick, right? That's the beauty of this style of uh, curry. It should be pretty thick. You don't want a watery one. But if you think it's quite thick, there's nothing stopping you from adding a little bit of kombu in there. Just throw a little bit of kombu in. But you know, you're putting in a kilo worth of um, fish fillets. So it is going to feed a decent amount. You know, six, five to six easy servings from this one recipe. And also what's kind of cool, because you are making a curry out of this, just for budget purposes, um, there is nothing stopping you from using a white was frozen fish. So you could buy, because they tend to be, as you know, a little bit cheaper to buy than fresh fillets. So you could buy frozen fillets, but I suggest if you do that, leave your fillets to defrost in the fridge overnight. So they don't get all, they don't, they, you want to defrost them gently. There's less opportunity that the fillets will become waterlogged. So you can use frozen because it's going into a curry. There's nothing stopping you, especially if the budget sort of won't allow for um, fresh fillets. And when you're at that stage that you've defrosted your fillets, just cut them up like I've done, slide them in, submerge them under the liquid, just like that. And you're still going to get a really, really wonderful result. I think the key when it comes to choosing your fish is just to make sure it is firm. Because the last thing you want to do is to put a delicate fish in here. Let's say like the, the flesh of flounder is so incredibly delicate. You put a delicate fish in here and it just falls apart and breaks apart. So go for that lovely firm fish. And once you're submerged, if you've got a big enough lid, pop the lid on. Allow it to do its thing. You just kind of want to bubble away. You don't want it to be too hot here. You don't want the curry to catch. Just let it bubble away. Depending on the size of your fillets, this process could take four to five minutes. Yes, we have a question. Can you freeze this fish curry? Can you freeze it? You can, um, you can freeze it if you use fresh fillets. If you've used previously frozen fillets, I wouldn't suggest refreezing them because they will become very, very mushy. So yes, you can freeze it, but only when you're using fresh. And I'm just thinking of this from a texture perspective. Um, it would be whoa, quite mushy if it was. I'm just thinking about it. If you were to use frozen and then refreeze them, that wouldn't be very nice at all. And it's also not recommended just from a health and safety point of view as well in terms of you know what potentially could be in our food. So be really careful and gentle when you are uh, mixing this around, but kind of... We can leave it off to the side now. I want to show you a few cool things, a few cool ideas on how you might be able to, or what you might be able to serve it with. So, um, obviously, well, not obviously, but fairly obviously, 
you could make cauliflower rice because you know curry is traditionally served with rice and you could make the low carb version of rice which is cauliflower rice absolutely you could do that but i want you to just maybe have a little think about some of the other cool things that we could possibly vegetable wise use to make rice because really there's so many vegetables that you are able to make rice with because basically what is rice it's kind of like this texture that we're after and i want you to have a think about anything that you could use in um with spiralizer so underneath the curry because zucchini as we know can be eaten raw so zucchini rice if you've never tried zucchini rice i suggest you give it a go and you don't have to cook it in fact i'm going to show you how to do it but before we do that just a few other vegetables that i just want to make mention of that you can also turn into rice this here there's only a quarter left because i love it this is known as chikama and it is a root vegetable, but it's a root vegetable that's non-starchy. So a lot of vegetables that grow under the ground, like potatoes and sweet potatoes, they tend to have a really high starch content, which is not good for controlling blood glucose levels or managing our insulin response. Whereas this is a root vegetable, but it is almost like the texture of a fresh apple. It is amazing. Or an apple cucumber. That's kind of the cross of what it reminds me of. And yes, it can be eaten raw and through salad. So this is actually really nice um, rice. You can rice this. You don't have to cook it as well. And um, it, 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 it comes as a big bowl. I wish I had the full one, but I ate it. <laughs> I ate it in a salad because it's really delicious. Uh, but this is really nice. Chikama, it's also known as yam bean. Um, ask your veggie, your green grocer, if they can get you some of these in. It's really, really good. But there's also things like kohlrabi which is another beautiful bulb-like vegetable. Doesn't grow underground, this one. But it makes really good rice as well. So you would rice it like you do cauliflower, and then you would pop it into the microwave and cook it for a couple of minutes, season it with salt and pepper, and you've got beautiful rice. Celeriac is another one that I want you to consider. You guys know I love that big bulbous fruit, which is celeriac. And the other one that may not be on your radar, I hope it is now, is swede or rutabaga. Makes really good rice as well. Once again, you rice it um, as you would in a food processor, and then you pop it in the microwave for a couple of minutes just to cook through gently, season it up with some salt and pepper, throw some fresh herbs in there, and you've got the most spectacular rice. Of course, another rice we haven't talked about is broccoli. Broccoli makes really, really good rice too. So lots of vegetable ideas for you to rice with. But I do like the idea of ricing our zucchini because of course that means we don't have to cook it. I mean, all the cooking's been done here and it's bubbling away really nicely. I'm very, very happy with it. I'm just gonna have a little bit of a look just to kind of see what might be going on cooking-wise in the fillet. And you can tell when it's cooked because it goes from opaque to, to white. So it goes from translucent to white. That's still um, got some translucent uh, qualities to it. So I'm just going to put it in there for a little bit longer. Let it do its thing. Turned it up one, just so it hurries up. But it's about, like, depending on the size of the fillets that you're using, how fat they are, it could take four to five minutes. It could take up to eight minutes. So just keep on checking it to make sure it's cooked through. So let's quickly make some zucchini rice. I learned this little secret on how to get really good textured rice. Um, so when it comes to something like a zucchini and wanting to make rice, rather than sort of chopping it up and throwing it straight into the blender, get my blender ready, what you can do first, just to help with the texture, is if you've got a little spiralizer like I have, you can spiralize it first. It just absolutely helps when it comes to breaking it up. So you don't get big chunks, small chunks, you get a really nice even texture um, with this. I mean, you could even, if you didn't want to rice it, there's nothing stopping you from just spiralizing your zucchini and then not cook, you don't need to cook it. Remember, it's gonna cook just with this hot curry goes over it. Um, just spiralize it and have like noodles, which would be really, really cool. And I totally suggest that you should do that, that would be awesome. 
But if you really want to kind of get a, a lovely texture, <laughs> spiralise it first before you make the rice. And you know, any of these type of vegetables that can be spiralised can be rice. But of course, stay away from the starchy ones like sweet potato and carrot because they will, you know, raise your blood glucose and all that sort of stuff. So, yes, absolutely. Spiralise, serve it spiralised, or, you know, if you want to create the rice, which we do, then grab up your little blender. It takes mere seconds. <laughs> And you've got a really, really quick, really, really nice rice. <laughs> Come on, trick. It does help to make things just that much more smoother and the texture just seems to be more rice-like. So here's some I prepared earlier. Um, as I was saying, I am not going to bother with the cooking of this. All I'm going to do is season it. So a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Didn't bring my pepper grinder. Salt's fine. A little bit of salt. Another cool thing that you can pick coriander out of any other herd, but my coriander's just it's not happening in my garden. Mm -hmm. Chives, whatever, but just we want to pack this full of flavour as much as possible. So that is fabulous. Rice is ready to go. Let's take a look at what's happening over here. So as you guys know, we have been boiling or bubbling away here for a good couple of minutes. But in order to tell what's going on, the best way to do it is to take up a piece. And if it flakes away, just like that, you know it's ready to go. That's what you're after, just to flake, flake away. All right, I might not use my fingers to get that out. That could be dangerous. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, dirty fingers. Right, last thing that we need to do. Last, last step. I'm going to turn it off so it stops bubbling up at me. Very important step is we need to have a taste. What is go what is happening in here? What's going on? Wow, it's tasting fantastic. Mmm. I haven't even added any seasoning into that. So I'm just going to add a little bit of salt. A couple of pinches of salt. Help with balance. I'm going to add in just a couple of squeezes of lemon juice. And it is literally done. That is it. That is all we need to do to make it complete. Give it a gentle stir, a gentle mix. Beautiful, and now it's just time to plate up. So, got a plate here. Start with your rice. Always a good idea to start with your base, which is your rice. That goes in. You're probably looking at a couple of zucchinis per person, which may seem like a lot, but you know, when you're eating curry, it's actually not that much. So, a couple of zucchinis per person, which is what I've got in here. You know, oh, I always like to top it up, top up the vegetables. You know, don't be shy when it comes to plants. Do not be shy. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Are you ready, my hangy lunch is getting ready. <laughs> this looks so good. All right, so we just then all we have to do is take that wonderfully cooked curry. It is so rewarding to see this, you know. I just love these, these types of moments when you've cooked something completely from scratch. This is all you. And you get something pretty amazing as the end result. So lots of that gravy goes on there. Look at that beautiful piece of fish can go right on the top. And there you have it. The most gorgeous, gorgeous fish curry in a coconut gravy with 
rice zucchini, which is going to be lovely and fresh and light, and you have the most wonderful little lunch, ready for you, or dinner of course, and you get to feed four or five people as well. Isn't that amazing? Well, thank you guys. I hope I hope you made this. I will be sharing the recipe with you tomorrow on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. I will be sharing it as well on ModKai, which is our recipe sharing platform where we share recipes, we share videos, we share cooking classes. If you'd like to join us on ModKai, feel free to do so. Just go to ModKai, which is M-O-D. KAI.com. That is our standalone platform. There's no ads, there's no spammers. It's just all the delicious recipes that I know you guys love. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your weekend. I hope you enjoyed when you make this. I know you're going to enjoy it. Take care. Bye bye.